All right, Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, I haven't gone for my run yet, so it's still early in the morning. Uh, I had uh, several ideas that I wanted to do today. This is just uh, an introduction for a series, a new series. <laughs> Hold on to your hats. This is for Mormons and for ex-Mormons and for less active Mormons and for the world, according to John Lynn in his comment. Uh, it's about the CES letter. Uh, Jeremy Runnels is the one who did it. Uh, he was Mormon. Uh, then uh, he wrote this letter to the CES director. And uh, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and so I'm going to go over it and comment on it. Uh, you may think, well, who are you, Travis? You're nobody. Seriously? <laughs> That's the whole problem, is that I, of all people, am a nobody. Born and raised in the church, going on 50 years, have done research on the ancient languages and the ancient cultures of the Bible. I've uh, done lots of things very influential to Mormons. Was on the... Uh, church curriculum department uh, for uh, the footnote changes in the uh, foreign language editions, uh, the guide to the scriptures difference for those of you who have a foreign language edition from 2009. Uh, I know names and I know events within the scriptures that the church is not telling you guys. Uh, and uh, I've also done actual research on church history. I've not listened to somebody else's information and said, oh, that must be true, because I feel it's true. <laughs> Again, it's a baggage problem that Mormonism has on people because Mormonism got it all wrong after Joseph Smith was murdered by Brigham Young's orders. So, see? I know stuff people don't know. <coughs> but, uh, CES letter, I'm looking at the site. He's got a dot .org. Uh, he's started a foundation. So, apparently, he did get settlement money from the church. Uh, there was, uh, the church excommunicated him when he started to make public the CES letter and going on interviews and all that stuff. And so the church wanted him shut up. That's what the church does. That's a bad thing to do, Mormons. You don't shut someone up when they're asking legitimate questions. Sort of. <laughs> we'll get to that in the series. Uh, and so uh, he then got a lawyer, and uh, that was the last I heard, and now I see he's got a foundation. So he got settlement money with his lawsuit, so good for you. Uh, and he's allowed to keep using the CES letter uh, after his lawsuit, so again, good for you. Uh, John DeLynn got silenced, for example. <coughs> okay, he advertises this as my search for answers to my Mormon doubts. He says the CES letter is one Latter-day Saint's honest quest. Not so honest, Jeremy. Come on now. <laughs> we'll get to it. Uh, he's got uh, all... He's, he's trying to make it the Book of Mormon. He's got all these different languages, Espanol, Portuguese, Svenka, Svenska, really, Swedish, cool, good for you, uh, Japanese, Dutch, and Suomen Kaili, Finnish. 
uh, and then are you interested in helping translate CDS letter into more languages? Get set apart by your stake president now. That's what I had to be in order to be a church service missionary for the curriculum department working on the scriptures footnotes. Uh, even though I was the English uh, template version, uh, they do that for those who are uh, translators for the Book of Mormon. Uh, I knew a guy when I was in the Bronx who had been assigned by the church, had to be set apart by a state president, and, and so he was uh, given church assistance uh, while he was doing this. Uh, to translate it into uh, his uh, his national origin language, uh, which the church had not at that time had a version of, and of course he was milking it. <laughs> uh, but that, he saw a job opportunity, and it was handed to him, and he took it, and he is abusing it. <laughs> uh, and so most likely uh, the church would have had to have redone his version if they could find some other Mormon who was of that nationality. In the Bronx, the uh, branch president there uh, announced to the ward, to the branch, that uh, there were 52 different or nationalities represented there in the Bronx branch at that time. And that was uh, 89 to 91. So it would have been 91. That's when I finished my mission. Uh, <coughs> so, now, uh, if you don't know me as an LDS critic, uh, I gave Kwaku the priesthood key of translation. The church, since Brigham Young, did not take from Joseph Smith with his murder. They didn't take the key of translation. So I got the key of translation, gave it to Kwaku, who's a Mormon teen apologist. I'm sure he's gone on a mission. But, I mean, the Monson lowered the age, so he may still be a teen. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're eight years old? Go on a mission. You get to go to France. You get to go to Germany. You get to go to the Philippines. <laughs> and child slave labor, no problem out of the United States. <clears throat> okay, and so, I, of course, he's getting attacked by Mormons because that's what Mormons do, isn't it? The newest guy who thinks he's shutting me down by putting a thumbs down which doesn't show on YouTube because I've uh, made sure to turn those off so nobody can be influenced by the ups or downs that's to stop the abuse that Mormons were causing and Russians <laughs> I've had to deal with Russians you know we have had an impeachment trial going on with a president who wants to divert away from all things Russia. Uh, let's see. And so he's being attacked because of this. Mormons, apologists especially, uh, that's what a Mormon apologists are doing. They're training Mormons to use fallacy arguments. And they get abusive uh, in their arguing as a result. As the church members lie and abuse in order to protect the church and Mormons my god what's wrong with you stop it and so then Jeremy goes into this denial no the church didn't excommunicate me I excommunicated the church come on you're falling into the psycho trap <clears throat> and there's his uh, video and here's reviews. Hans H. Matson. Uh, that's probably why he got the uh, the Finnish and uh, Swedish translations. Is uh, probably from him. Uh, he was an uh, area authority seventy, so not that big of a deal. He wasn't a made man. Made man, if you understand your Godfather terminology. 
Uh, and so he says, uh, Reynolds' CES letter presents many historical issues concerning LDS history, which for many members has been a wake-up call. The letter deserves to be read both in and out of the LDS community. Read with an open mind. Uh, no, no, that psycho, psycho babble crap. Don't fall for that. No, open mind means you close your mind to truth. <sighs> God, and you will understand why many members are asking questions. Uh, Grant H. Palmer. Uh, he is often quoted in Wikipedia that I've, I've recognized. Uh, no, you don't quote authors. You go to the source. Joseph Smith was arrested in March of 1826. You don't quote a current author. You show the actual uh, document from the courthouse in the thing. Say, here it is. It was for a dollar thirty-seven or whatever as a misdemeanor charge. <sighs> Uh, he says it's an excellent summary of the fundamental or foundational problems of the church. Thank you for lowercasing the the. Nelson and was uh, big on capitalizing that. Uh, so, okay, here's John DeLynn, PhD. Yeah, what is your PhD in, John? Please tell us. <laughs> I'm a doctor. Doctor of what? Uh, philosophy? <laughs> Sociology? Oh, so you're not a real doctor. Um, meticulously researched, this book presents Jeremy's sincere, heartfelt, John! <coughs> Mormons pull this stunt of using emotional adjectives. <sighs> no, that's a psychobabble trap. Psychology has messed up Mormonism, and it's messing up anti Mormonism. <laughs> Gotta stop it, guys. Psychology, psychology psychiatry. They're pseudosciences. They're fake sciences. They do not use sound arguments in their diagnoses. And it's a Mormon, Stanley Smith Stevens, who came up with the, the pattern that is specifically used here in Utah. The dichotomy and non-dichotomic approaches. You guys don't know that either, did you? Uh... But uh, the non-dichotomous are purposely manipulated as they create categories for people to fall into and then only judge people by the category they placed them in. And so it's not true research. Uh, it's forcing the stats. And it, it's wrong. And so again, I'll go over, Jeremy's not as sincere as he's leading everybody to believe. Aren't you, Jeremy? <laughs> okay, oh, how labor of love for truth. <laughs> John DeLynn is throwing out some Mormon jabs. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Uh, if you want to quickly learn the main historical and scientific issues with LDS Church truth claims, I know of no other resource. Dude! He keeps dissing on me. Unbelievable. I've reached out to him, tried to get on his Mormon stories. He won't accept me. <laughs> Which is another problem that I've addressed about those who leave the church. They carry the baggage with them, and they behave exactly as Mormons. Mind blown. Amazing work. So eloquent. Which is interesting, because if you listen to Jeremy, 
he's got a slow of speech problem, which is kind of fascinating. It has no effect on his intellect whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, he's got lots of people making good comments that he used. Uh, born and raised in Southern California, the only place to be an Eagle Scout. I I gotta tell you guys about my Eagle Scout. I think I have on my other channel, uh, but uh, I need to update those other videos onto this one. I did have a request for that too. Uh, return missionary, BYU alumnus. No, you don't want to put BYU in there. You don't want to claim that as your education. <laughs> he married in the San Diego Temple, which means he's a youngin. Because uh, uh, I had left home in Southern California as it was being constructed. My dad had one of the uh, office buildings in that complex area by the temple. Uh, let's see. Mormonism the rest of his life, experienced an awakening to the LDS Church's truth crisis, concerned, uh, he asked a CES director, and the CES director refused to respond. That's a common Mormon problem. Jeremy should know this. <laughs> so, uh, I deserve to have all the facts. And then we're going to go over those facts that you're claiming and talk about your sincerity from the sources you're getting these things from. Uh, information on the table, uh, common attacks. Okay, so yeah, here's all the videos that got him excommunicated. Several unofficial Mormon apologists, including Fair Mormon, Fair Mormon is unofficial? I thought they were the official Mormon apologists through the evolution from farms to uh, the uh, Maxwell Institute to FAIR once the guy, uh, got Daniel Peterson, got kicked out. <laughs> they brought him in to grandfather him into a new job and then they booted him out. <laughs> And then the Deseret News took him in as an editor. <coughs> so, hmm, okay, so Fair Mormon is unofficial. Alright, debunking, Fair Mormon debunking. So, yeah, well, I'll do a series of this, and, and uh, this will be fun.